Hi guys, today we're gonna be talking about how to fly your FT1 Swell Pro fishing drone. So there are a few pre-checks that I would recommend to try before going out and doing any sort of fishing for yourself. The first step that we're gonna be talking about how to prepare and connect your battery and then I'm gonna be talking about a little bit of a pre-checks that you need to test and check before you send your drone out with a bait or so and then how to put your propellers on etc so let's start with the showing you how to put your battery in first so if you can come a little bit closer to the drone i'll i'll explain it so the easier way to put the battery in is very simple just in case you struggle with the having wires popping around all the time simple process is you connect the yellow xt90 plug to the yellow pin on the motherboard and then slide your battery in like this and then just make sure the straps are actually not underneath the battery and then make sure this battery is placed in tight and nice and then this front sign would follow the front sign on the drone as well. Make sure these latches, these screws are just tight enough, not too tight, not too loose, because this is gonna play a vital role for you just in case if your drone crashes in the sea water, this will make sure that the water is not going in all the way. So now we're gonna be talking about how to calibrate your drone so there are three different steps that we're gonna follow through one by one first step is turn your controller on and then turn your drone on as well when the drone and the controller is connected to each other the first step would be well first message would be initializing it would take about 15 to 30 seconds or something like that a little longer okay just gonna wait okay so the fir very first mistake that everybody makes is sometimes here on the satellite sign it would come up with 10 straight away that is the first mistake people make because they think that the satellites are full which is not true so you just need to wait for 15 to 30 seconds for the satellite to refresh itself the other mistake that people make is not looking at their controller voltage. If the controller voltage is less than 5.3 volt, then you need to change your AAA batteries. It's because the, the cells are at really low voltage and that can cause a crash, a connection issue and weak signals. So you need to make sure that voltage is always above 5.3 volt. Otherwise, you're never going to have an easy flight. So the first step of calibration is put your joystick down and then go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Then it's going to come up with a message call saying initializing. That means the first calibration is getting embedded in the motherboard. So which again is going to take 15 to 30 seconds. Now, the second thing is switch your drone off, which would send a message to the controller saying it's been disconnected. So, that's it. Now you switch your controller off. The second step is switch on your controller and switch on your drone. Now it's gonna initialize. Again, taking a little bit of time now it came up with 10 straight away which I do not think is 
the strength straight away so i'm actually gonna wait for 10 to 15 seconds before i start my second process yeah looks okay to me but still just want to make sure that i don't have any sort of weak signal or weak satellite or or anything that can make or cause any issue when i'm gonna fly so it seems okay the other way to check if the satellites are full is basically uh, have it in the g mode gps mode and try arming your motors if the motors are arming that means the connections are full otherwise it will come with the message saying warning no gps that means that you can't do can't arm your motors in the gps mode or wait till the satellites are full since the satellites are full now i'm gonna start my second calibration which is joystick up left right left right left right left right left right left right left initializing that's also done almost still I'm gonna take 15 to 30 seconds each time now again switch off your drone if it takes slightly longer you can always lift and check if the lights are on or not since it's off that means the drone is off and it's been disconnected from the controller switch it off again same turn the drone on turn the controller on wait for it to connect now the third calibration that we're gonna be doing is gonna set your home point the position or the location where it's gonna start flying now what we normally would do is we're gonna explain two different ways of calibrating your drone uh, the first one the easier one which would I would say is easy for everybody to understand is moving your body with the drone I'll show you how we would normally do it so you flicker your GPS switch a few times and there would be a message coming up horizontal calibration rotate drone clockwise so what you normally would do you hold it and then you rotate with the drone next message would be vertical calibration clockwise when they send nose down that means your front arrows need to be like this and then you spin then it will come up with a message saying initializing when it comes up with initializing that means that the calibration is getting embedded in the motherboard again and then you wait again for 15 to 30 seconds sweet it's all done last time switch off your drone it'll beep on the controller when it's been disconnected i will normally look at it again it's disconnected so i'm gonna turn the controller off as well done so that is your whole calibration process so now we're gonna talk about how to put your propeller very simple sometimes people make very minor mistakes of thinking that it's been uh, increased or even the top mark but in reality they just in and not really all the way in contact with the with the lips over here a simple way to do it is basically I'm gonna put the counter clock first. You hold your your one arm of the drone from the bottom. You go like this. You put your thumb in. You push the propeller in, and then you go like this. So that's how uh, you're gonna you can easily mount or put the propeller on without having any problem to double check if i've done the job is basically i'll try and pull it a little bit and see if it comes out it didn't so 
so it means it's gone in properly now the second step is same clockwise put your fingers underneath the motor side put your propeller on push and then rotate okay not in now it's in perfect same way same way oh yeah that's all right now i have already turned my controller on and the drone on is drone is also on so we don't need to re redo everything and wait for that system to initialize and try to connect itself now the first pre checks are going to be your controller pre checks where i'm going to make sure that the joystick reach for the joysticks are perfectly fine in the position uh to do that uh, we just need to bring the camera a little bit closer to the to the controller so this little switch and this screen actually talk to each other so this screen is like your book pages so it goes from one page to another page i would go to this channel page this display page and i'll make sure all my trims the on the first four channels are, are aligned on a uh, zero position which means there is no black bars popping out of any of those channels if there are some bars like this popping out then you just need to move your your trim back to normal by using these four switches depending which channel it is and go back to normal now these three switches are channel 5 channel 6 and channel 7 so channel 6 sorry channel 5 is working perfectly fine channel 6 is also working perfectly fine channel 7 has three positions gps hybrid and atdi so all works perfectly fine of, say for example the height of the drone or the distance of the drone from the controller itself when you want to start flying are shown okay on the parameter so on the screen itself what we actually going to do is we basically going to arm the motor like this and the first major mistake that many people make is go crazy on their joysticks uh the drone itself or the the motor itself are spinning on a really high rpm so what you can do is you can go really slowly on this left joystick which is your uh joystick to make the go fly up or uh, up or to land it you use this joystick what you're going to do is you're going to go really slow with the joystick if you look at it clearly i'm not even going all the way up and the drone is perfectly working fine so i'm actually going to fly it and let it hover just above my height because if something happens i know that it will fly over my head rather than flying into So that's the first pre-check I would do. Stabilize on the height against the wind gust. Everything is going okay, and the height shown on my my controller is about seven meters, which is about right. So it seems fine to me. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna make it go fly a little higher. directional joystick making it go left right mm, go away from you bring it back kind of thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it go away from me so i'm going to let it stabilize a little bit itself and then i would basically press return home and return home would make the, the drone go uh, 30 to 50 meters up and then it's going to come back to the position where it started from and it's going to try and land onto the same position if something goes wrong you can always put it in the manual mode and try to fly uh, or operate it manually yourself and try and land it safely but again normally if everything has been done and those pre checks has been uh, done as well 
then you would not have any issue with your with your SP1 and that is how I would say is a perfect return home test flight for any day like this so that's done